tell me about you. What do you want to do with your guitar playing? Um, I'm not exactly sure. Eventually, I want to be able to like write songs and stuff, or just like be able to listen to a song and play it. Because I know yeah. how to do that. On, I know how to do that on piano already, but uh, on guitar, it seems a little a bit harder. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely a different uh, relationship, you know, black and white keys versus strings that you can bend that can, can go yeah. in tune and stuff. Yeah, I, I love guitar. <clears throat> uh, and why do you want to do this stuff? Um, I don't know, it's just a thought. Guitar sounds really cool. And it's nice to be able to just, like, have a friend or someone that I hang out with just be like, oh, hey, can you play something? And then I can do it yeah yeah for the love of music yeah for the love of, of it yeah okay well play play something for me uh okay uh, oh. Okay, can you play some chords? Uh, I don't know many chords, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's, let's start by, can you get a cleaner uh, sound from the amplifier, like turn off any distortion? Yeah. Um... Yeah, okay, so there's generally, there's two ways of, of playing. One is when you are practicing and learning stuff and struggling to be able to play something, that's practice and that's like work. But once you've worked like long enough, you know, you feel that that's long enough, then you can just forget about practicing and just explore and play and, and find stuff. And, and that's playing. Yeah. So there's a big difference between playing and practicing. Some guys get in the rut of where they just practice, 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 and they, they, they can get real good, but they lose their it loses its musicality. Okay, so here's your first thing. This is just awesome. This is an app called Guitar Toolkit. And it's got a really good tuner in it. Oh, wow. And it's got Playing from Rob's song 2015. Uh, a metronome. And wow. a me metronome is a really good thing to play with because it keeps you honest. Here, let me play just a little bit. And I'll, I'll show you what's typical, typical stuff for me. Now, you're using a guitar pick, so I'll, I'll use a guitar pick as well. To use a metronome like that, it doesn't require any knowledge or anything. Like, just doing that. Might seem like no big deal, but it's a good thing to do. So you can see that you can get acquainted with the ability to pick by using a metronome. Yeah. So that's one thing. Now, also in that app, what's the name of the app? Uh, Guitar Tool. Guitar Toolkit. Oh. Yeah, it just co costs a couple bucks, but it's so worth it. It's got every chord you could ever want to play in there. Oh, wow. and, and it's got every scale you could ever think of. So what you need to do is learn your chords. And uh, so let's, uh, so you, you'll just want to learn all the basic chords, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and all the sharps and flats. But we'll just don't worry about the sharp, sharps and flats at first. So <clears throat> as you... As you go up the string, that uh, that note right there is E. Okay, that's an E. Yeah, so E. 
uh, you probably don't know the the note st string note names. Uh, my E A. Oh crap! I think it's. I know the first three is E A D. Yeah, and then G B E. Yeah. Uh, and then you can think of an acronym for that that'll help you remember it, like <laughs> Eat Anchovies Daily. Good bread. You know, make up <laughs> that you'll remember. So you remember that. But anyway, okay, so that's the E. Now, what you need, you know, there's a, a toss-up between how much theory you're going to try to know and how much just being able to do it uh, without knowing all that intellectual stuff. There's a toss-up between that. But what you do need to know is that this is E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. So uh, the position markers, that's a G, A, B. And then, and then it's C, D, E. So you need to know, you need to memorize that. The relationship of the strings are a certain pattern. So from E to F, it's just E, F there, and then a whole step to G, and that's the position marker. Whole step to A, that's a position marker. Whole step to B, and that's a position marker. But there's a half step to C, whole step to D, and a whole step back up to E. And E is the octave, and it's called octave because octa in Latin, I think, is uh but octa means eight i think so one two three four five six seven eight so uh so here's what you need to do you need to learn the e e chord f chord uh, f chord g a b c d e and so in in guitar toolkit they you, you can see all those basic chords. Yeah, you can see all those basic chords. And so learn all those basic chords in the major key. And then learn them in minor. So what you'll find is that uh, a regular E chord played like that. If you take, that's the major third. If you take that off, it becomes minor. And what you want to do over time is recognize the difference in chords. So the difference between a major and a minor, the major sounds, oh, it sounds fine. Everything is cool. But then, oh my God, a pandemic comes along and it's really sad and tragic. But then the vaccine comes out and everything's okay or on its way to being okay. But then there's a big earthquake. Oh no, and more tragedy. You know, feel the difference between chords. Why? When you get acquainted with the, the feel of... Uh, of chords, then you know why they're used in a song, you know. <clears throat> so each chord has its own mood, its own flavor. And then when you experiment with putting chords together, they then they tell a story like this. You know, uh, it's beautiful what what music does and how it works. <clears throat> so let's see. So another piece of homework will be 
you'll just learn uh, position one of the C major scale. And that is you go up to C, E, F, G, A, B, C, and you're gonna go, those are all host, whole steps. Go to the next string, all whole steps. Then go to the next string and up one. So that's the C major scale. And I say position one because there's position two and three and four and five and six and seven. And uh, when you know all those positions of the C major scale, then you can you can really get around on the neck. And this, I know all this might seem overwhelming at first, but by getting this overview of stuff, you can keep coming back to this and everything will make sense. So when you're learning your chords, what we want to do is form the chord in the air before you even touch the strings. So at first you'll touch the strings, of course. But when, you, when you've got, like that's a G there. When you've got it, then lift up your fingers and keep it so that you can bounce that chord. Because in a song, you're gonna go. You know, it's boom, 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 from one chord to another. So you have to. You have to. It's okay. This is a very important principle. So before you play the chord, you have to know what it is that you're going to do. And that is visualization. And visualization happens all the time. Every day you, you visualize something before uh, you're going to do it. How old are you? 16? Uh, yeah, I'm 16. Are you driving yet? Yeah, I just started driving. <laughs> yeah. So before you go somewhere, you have to think, okay, where am I going? You visualize it. And you think, Am I going to go this way or this way or this way? Well, you visualize the way you're going to go. And so you visualize stuff all the time before you do it. You don't really think about that too much. But so I don't know if you see this as a potential career or like you have a dream of being a rock star or just being like a composer for movies or something like that. But you'll get a lot farther if you know what you want, if you know where you want to go and you start visualizing that and you hold on to that and you think about it all the time, you live and breathe that vision. And as you do that, you'll attract, uh, you'll attract other people. You'll attract uh, events. You'll attract information to come your way and it will crystallize and coalesce and slowly come together, come together. And, and as you work and as you're dedicated to learning the guitar, uh, when it does come together, you'll be ready for it. Now, if you don't practice your guitar and you're doing all this dreaming of something and then some opportunity comes, you might not be ready. So you want to, you want to work hard. When I first started playing, I would practice for eight hours a day and I didn't have a teacher, so I didn't really know what I was doing, but I was sure as hell trying, you know, and I didn't start, I didn't start until I was 15. So that's a late start for somebody. Okay. Visualization. So you want to see yourself, but like, do you want to like perform live in front of audiences? Mm, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's pretty scary. It is it, not everybody belongs on stage, but uh, no matter what you choose to do with it, uh, it can be 
a real money maker, but that is rare. So the idea of you making money with this thing, you know, it's the chance, the odds are against it. So to make it happen, you'll have to really work hard and you'll need to see a niche of where you want to be. Like being a composer for like Hollywood movies, I, I would, God, I just think that would be so much fun. So let's talk about composing for a second. A really important thing to do. Who, who's some, who are some of your favorite guitarists? Uh, trying to think. But he's, a, he's such a gamer. Is there, is there something from gaming? I wouldn't know that person's name. Oh, you wouldn't know, you wouldn't know the guitar. Hey. Well, anyway, it's really good to have some somebody that you really look up to and are inspired by where you can go in and copy that that person's work like like uh Listen to something that really moves you that you just love and and grok it. Oh, you probably don't know what that word means. Uh, <laughs> what you do is you learn it, but you don't just learn the notes. You go, you feel that person's spirit and and you capture that. It's like an impersonator that an impersonator that is like, uh, hey Rocky. Yeah, Bullwinkle. Hey, Rocky, I want to learn how to play guitar. But, Bullwinkle, you can't play guitar. Why not, Rocky? Because you got that big paw thing. You can't play guitar with that. You know, uh, <laughs> you impersonate that person that you look up to and hold in such high esteem. You capture their spirit and you make yourself be able to sound just like them. And when you can do that, I mean, it, this stuff is challenging. You're going to get uh, calluses on your finger. It's going to hurt w when you're learning those chords. But uh, part of the way of winning is to, you know, plow through that pain and don't give up when you're trying to learn the, that guitar part from that guy and just keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. And then when you make these little victories you got that chord you got that a and that a minor chord uh each one of those victories is you know feeding that little fire under you that is going to make you win and like russell wilson says it's all about the w you know <laughs> <laughs> however you get there it doesn't matter just get the win a huge part of the joy of of playing to me is composing something how would he get into composing if that's something that he wanted to do okay well first of all <clears throat> you got to learn your chords and when you learn that scale you're on your way to uh being able to play single note stuff and to play chordal stuff and so let's say you've learned a few chords like So G, C, E minor. Uh, tell me something that has happened to you recently that has bummed you out. Uh, I just not being able to see my friends as much. Or actually, I don't know, like skiing season got shut down kind of. Or like you have to make reservations and stuff. So yeah. that's... What's your that's friend's name? Uh, Logan. Logan.
song had won a slogan. I think I'd name this song Logan. You know, it, it, it's as easy as that. You learn three chords and you can start writing a song. So, do you sing? Do you have a desire to sing? Yeah. That's good. So, <clears throat> so singing is the uh, epitome of laying your, your deepest part out on the line for everybody to see. So it's really scary because you don't want to suck, you know. You don't want to... You don't want people to go, oh, man, please don't sing. Or do you know that song, Far Away? Sing that song, Far Away, you know? And uh, that really hurts. I, I got a lot of that. <laughs> and it really <laughs> messed me up psychologically. And, boy, I uh, <clears throat> had to really, really try to get past that. So uh, singing is a great thing to, to, to work on. And... Uh, but we'll just keep to guitar guitar at first. So you're going to learn all your major chords and your minor chords, your basic ones, the E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. And you're going to bounce those chords as you're learning them. And uh, you're going to learn the C major scale. <clears throat> so that's a good start. Okay, now something that is really important. So, <clears throat> you prop have you like you should Google other sixteen-year-olds and ten-year-olds, and some of these guys are so good, and it's incredible because they can sound like uh, I got some blue. I don't know why I feel this way. You know, it's this 10-year-old kid sounding like an old black guy. <laughs> How do they do that? And that, by the way, is a really desirable, valuable trait to have. <clears throat> so I got to give you a little bit of history here. So in the 1800s, uh, <clears throat> Okay, so first of all, you got all these Europeans coming over to settle this new land. They're going to call it America. So they go in and uh, they murder Indians and give them smallpox to help. And they give them uh, whiskey and alcohol. And they just take advantage of these guys to the point where they conquer them. And that's how we won our country. All our Europeans came over and murdered and, and infiltrated and destroyed their religion and their tribal ways and conquered them. Then we go to Africa and uh, go into the jungle and find these families of people living there, go in and, and kill all the older people and take the strongest young people and put them on a slave ship. Now, they weren't too careful about, or did they, yeah, they didn't care too much about these people. So half of them die on the way to America. Now they get to America, land of the free, land of the brave, and they're sold as slaves. So now you've got all these, and imagine the, the tragedy of seeing your brother die in the hull of a filthy ship now you're you're working for some slave owner that <clears throat> that has sex with your wife on a daily basis and uh you're out in the fields being whipped out in the hot louisiana sun and uh so there you got all these slaves out in the field now the plantation owners are real conscious of the fact that you could organize and and overrun them they've only got so many security guys there you could be overrun if they could organize so you really watch them you make sure they don't talk too much but 
out in the field, these guys are going, whoa, whoa, all day long, whoa. They get these chants going. And in the chants, they are speaking code language. And so this one group over here is going, I think we're going to make a break. You know, in a way that the English speaking white guys don't know what's going on. And so this bunch over here will, will be saying this stuff and then they'll stop. And then this other uh, bunch next to them will sing a chant that is a response to what they just heard. So it's like this call and response thing, call and response thing. Well, this white guy uh, heard that and this call and response in this tragic, uh, incredibly challenging context uh, is the basis of the blues. And the blues is the most popular, it's the most widespread genre of music on the planet. And it's because it's really simple. It's based on a 12 bar blues, which is a simple progression of three chords. So that's where the blues comes from. So when these guys created these blues songs back in the 1910s, 1920s, you've got uh, Charlie Patton worked at Dockery, the Dockery farm uh, in Mississippi. Charlie Patton was like a good guitar player singer. Well, this guy came to work at the plantation by the name of Robert Johnson. And Robert Johnson learned from Charlie Patton. And Robert Johnson wrote something like 25 songs, something like that, that became the seminal foundation for most other blues songs. So Robert Johnson was a really important guy. Well, he didn't play his cards very carefully and he was having sex with the club owner's wife. So the club owner poisoned him and so he died at 27 years of age. But before he did, if you ever get into the blues and you listen to Robert Johnson's songs, after that, any you'll hear his influence in, in Muddy Waters, uh, Sonny Boy Williams, all these other major blues artist, B.B. King, you'll hear his influence in all these other guys. So Robert Johnson was really important. But the reason it's good to, uh, to hear the blues, understand where they came from, and grok is a word that means you, you learn something, but you don't just learn the peripheral uh, the superficial aspect of that thing, you learn its spirit and its essence. So you you really know that thing. That's what it is to grok something. <clears throat> you grok the vibe of the blues. So it's eerie. It's really eerie because all humanity started in Africa. And so we all have and affiliation uh, relationship with the deepest uh, beginnings of, of mankind. And so when you've got these blues guys coming over and making music, they are like a direct conduit to that African beginning. So when you grok the blues and you copy these old black guys, you are getting a spirit of something that is so deep and profound that when you play, you don't even have to play the blues. When you instill that feeling in you know, you, you're, you're putting a vibe into what you play of something that matters, you know, it's emotion, it's spirit. And that spirit came from somewhere, you know? And so if you 
really get into these old blues guys, you, you capture that spirit. That's why a 10 year old can play the blues and sound like an old black guy because he has listened to that stuff and grokked it. So you picking up on that? Yeah. What I'm thinking? Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's good. It's good to, this is, this, this is a really good guitar lesson. <laughs> <laughs> This is important. It's, yep. Important. I'll have to afterwards. I'll I'll pull up BB King and some famous guitarists and kind of show him what you're talking about. Yeah, and you know it's one thing to it's one thing to be able to go. But it's a whole other thing to be able to. You know? Yeah. When you try to be impressive, uh, it doesn't always work real well but when you just try to play from your heart that's the best and that's why i named that band that name uh yeah because i knew that that was the best name for a, a musical group yeah it's a great name it's easy to remember yeah well so another thing that you can do is you can try and grok your teacher so let's see let's let's put a dirty sound on uh, so this this is a really easy thing to play. So if you can play that, that's good. <laughs> so it's really easy. It's a, uh, this is called a gallop. So it's down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. Let's see if you can do that. So down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. And you're just holding the uh, fifth string, uh, second fret, and the, the E string is open. Play that note. It's an L. Did you play it? I don't hear it. Mm. Okay, so the, the sixth string is open. So that's an E. And then you're playing the fifth string, second fret. Yeah. So you're playing those at the same time. Do that. Yeah. And no other string, just the six and the five string. Now you're going to go down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. Yeah. You can't hear it very well. Huh. Uh, yeah, turn it up just a little bit. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... Every, okay, here's a really important rule, general rule of thumb. When you're learning something, do it way slow. And do it slow enough so that you can do it. If you keep trying to do it fast and you're, and you're not succeeding, that's wrong. That, that's bad because you're learning how to make that mistake. That's what you're giving your muscle memory. Make that mistake. Make that mistake. No, that's not, that's not how we do it. Every great guitarist did it this way. You do it slowly and get it right. So down, down, up, down, down, up, down. And, uh, and I'm muting it a little bit with, with my, the heel of my hand here. Try that. I can see you're a fast learner. You've got that already. 
Yeah. So just that. You'll practice that really slowly, and then you gradually speed it up. So that's an assignment for you to, to get that down. And, and just, just that is enough for now. We won't worry about the yet, <laughs> but just get that gallop down. A principle that I want you to understand is, so why is, a, why is it there's a G major, there's a G7, there's a G minor, there's a G9, and all of these chords have a feeling, a flavor, so a G9. Really cool. G7. Has, has a certain flavor. You know, a, a G, G minor, of course. Is. So why are they called G7 and G9? What do those numbers mean? Here's what, here's what they mean. So we take that C major scale. And... Uh, we assign numbers to those notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, that's where the seven comes from. That's where the, the three comes from. So as we, like, we've got this C major chord here, and this is a, this should be an assignment too. <clears throat> uh, this is called a bar chord because like when you play an E down here, and you will learn that, the nut is the bar. But you can take that chord and play it instead of with the one, two, three fingers, play it with the two, three, four fingers, and then you can move that up. And you've got F. Move it up, whole step, you've got G, A, B, C, D, E. So you can do all these, uh, You can do all those chords up and down the neck. So that's really empowering. So you want to learn that. So you will take, you'll learn your E chord with one, two, and three fingers. Then you'll learn it with two, three, and four fingers. And then you'll move that up. So when you try and do this, it's hard, you know. It, God, I spent so much time on that. But once you get it, you know, then... Okay, so let's go up to C. Now we've got that 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 full bar advanced C chord. What are those these note values? So you've got we know that's the one. What's that? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, that's the five. Okay. So just that right there is a one five chord. Now one five chord is also a power chord. And that's the chord that we're using down here. One, two, three, four, five. The one and the five. Now, we're, uh, what we're going to do to do the barracuda lick is we're going to go move that one five chord up to the second fret and third fret. So that's all just a one five chord. Cool, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and the one, one five chord is uh, real universal. You can use it with most any other chord. So back up to the C position. Okay, we got that note. That's a five. Now what's, what's that note? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. Oh, eight is octa, which is an octave. So that's also a C. So that's pretty cool. So that you can call that the one too, even though it's the eight, you can still call it the one. And then you can continue up the scale.
And you can just do that by ear. I mean, you know, when you watch this, you can you can copy the, what I'm doing. But uh, let's use that now to figure out these other note values. So you've got the one, the five, the one, and what's that? One, two, three. That's the third. It's the major third. Okay, so what's this this note? You've, you're barring that with your, your bar. What's that note? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, it's another five. So you've got a one, five, a one, a three, a five. Now, what's this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, it's another one. So you've got a one there, one there, and a one there, <coughs> uh, which is C. And that's what determines those numbers. Clear, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, if it's not clear, if, it, if it's like swimming around and you're wondering stuff, it'll become crystal clear over time. But I, I assure you that that was a, a pretty good uh, explanation of how that works. Okay. So, homework is learn all your basic chords, major and minor. Uh, get that C major scale, uh, two octaves of it, so. Learn that. Uh, memorize these notes. That, uh, that they are the E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. And then you're going to learn down, down, up, down, down, up, down. And only when you get that down so you can do it, which is easy, you, you'll catch it fast. I saw you doing it right already. Then you add those two one five chords. And then what you'll do is you'll get your uh, guitar, your amp a little bit dirtier so you can go. So that you can go. And, and start having you know, real fun. Uh, and then and then pick it'd be good to pick like one or two guys that just blow you away, like Jimi Hendrix or Stevie Ray Vaughan or Jimmy Page, Eric Clapton, Mark Knopfler, you know, somebody that you just go, ah, I love this guy, you know, and then totally get into that person, you know, get their, uh, their the book, their biography, learn about where they were born, what was their upbringing like, how did they get into music, and then look what they did with their career and got, get inspired by by somebody and uh, you know just uh, that that inspiration is a big log in the fire that's going to propel you into whatever uh, it is that you choose to do. Now another thing about learning guitar and, and learning music is that <clears throat> and, and this is true of any art as you discover that you can win, you can conquer this, 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 and that you can play songs and that you can actually sing without being scared out of your wits of what people think about you. These victories will apply to everything else in your life because you know that if you can do this, you can go, you can go out in the stock market and learn that and be good at that. Or you can, you can pick up a, a hammer and, and, and nails and, and be a carpenter, or you can be a, an architect, you can do anything. But if you learn this, uh, you've, you've learned a lot. Yeah, that's a good point. And that's the end of the lesson. That's, <laughs> that's good stuff there, Roger. Who's, I, don't, I didn't recognize Mark. You said somebody, Mark, who is that? I recognize all the other names. Oh, Mark Knopfler. Nuffler. What band is he was is he in? He uh, he was the guy behind Dire Straits. Oh, okay. I know Dire Straits. Yeah, and but God, what an incredible guy. Just a, yeah. a great poet and great songwriter. He's so prolific, he just keeps writing and writing and writing, and his level of production 
uh, is really high. So everything that he records is just just spot yeah. on. Yeah, I'll have to look into him. Yeah, all the other names I recognized. Yeah, and then so it, uh, if you want to be a songwriter, uh, you'll you'll need to be able to uh, be a poet as well, and like she's. Well, Lennon and McCartney, you know, the Beatles, George Harrison, great lyricists, but like the best is, uh, well, Mark Knopfler is right up there, Paul Simon and Bob Dylan. Oh, yeah, those are great names, yeah, great songs. Just, I grew up with all of that. Yeah, incredibly ingenious poetry. <laughs> 